Today we are studying hydrodynamic forms. What we need for this experiment, we need some clay in the shape of a fish, so that would include all the parts of the fish. So we have the fish's tail, we have the fins, both fins, we have the dorsal fin, that's the one that goes on the top, and even the fish's eyes. Um, we also need a couple of these wooden um, skewers, and we need a block of clay the same weight as the fish. So first you make the fish in all its component parts, and then you're going to put them on a scale, a food scale to weigh them, and then you take a block of clay and you make sure it's the same weight. In this case, they're both just about two ounces. Okay, so that's the block of clay, and here's the fish with the tail, got the eyes, the fins, the dorsal fin, all that stuff. And it is also just about the exact same weight. Also going to need a tank of water. Take the barbecue skewer and stick it into the block of clay. And you're going to put it through the water and notice the ripples on the water, how much water it displaces when you make it go back and forth. A fish is a hydrodynamic form, so as you can see, no matter how fast you swish it back and forth, this teardrop form does not displace very much water. Very different from that block of clay. However, a fish does not have the luxury of having a barbecue skewer to steer it around. It needs a tail to steer it, a dorsal fin, which acts as a rudder, also helps to steer it, and we have these two fins on the side that it flaps almost like a bird's wing to propel it forward. When we take the fish and we put it in the water, and it's got those things put on it just straight forward, it will go back and forth straight forward, and again, it's not making very many ripples in the water. Okay, compare that to our block of clay, which is the exact same mass of clay, but it's in a different shape. And look at the ripples that it makes in the water. Way many more. Top of the water surface is much more disturbed. Okay, you see that V shape? Okay, now let's compare it again to the fish and see if that back and forth motion makes that same V shape. Not anywhere near as much. Okay. It's hard to measure it exactly, but it's definitely making less of a wake. Why is that? The molecules of water go off of here and here, leaving a vacuum. The water, molecules of water, want to fill in that vacuum, and when they fill it in, it pulls water away from the surface, creating that wake. Same thing happens in the air with an airplane where the, the wind comes off of the end of the plane and if it's an aerodynamic form, aero means air in Latin, hydro means water in Latin, so a fish is a hydrodynamic form, an airplane is a, or a bird is an aerodynamic form, but the molecules just kind of come together, but if you have a boxy block shape, then they don't come together and there's a vacuum here. The air tries to fill into that vacuum and that creates wind somewhere else because it's sucking the air from somewhere else to go in there. It also creates drag. The vacuum actually drags the form back. But the fish, as you can see, being hydrodynamic, has very little drag in the water. Let's look at this again from the top view. Okay, goes through the water. The water is still glassy smooth. And here we have our block of clay. And you can see the wake being formed. And the water filling in that wake where the vacuum is causing ripples in the water. Change the position of the fish's body in order to make it turn. So now he'll turn. Okay. 
and one fin is up, the other's down, so he'll not only turn, but go at a downward angle. So now he'll turn, okay, and one fin is up, the other's down, so he'll not only turn, but go at a downward angle. Now that I've turned his tail the other way, he will swim the other way. Again, barely causing a wake in the water. Whereas our block of clay, if I try and turn it, it will cause many more ripples. Okay, even bubbles. As the forms of vacuum, what are those bubbles? That's the air inside there, zoom to fill the vacuum. Those bubbles are in the air bubbles. And that vacuum, where there's no water, and it causes drag. I can even feel the resistance of the block of clay as I drag it back and forth. Whereas our fish friend tends to move very smoothly through the water, I feel very little resistance. Okay, barely a ripple make our connection between science and art. Engineers and designers actually looked at and studied fish in order to design submarines, boats, and they looked at birds in order to design airplanes. So artists and designers and engineers and scientists, their jobs all overlap.